What a do, players and trainers. It is your boy, the Blazing Squid, with Evolutions LDL Power Rankings Week One, or Evo for short. And as you guys can see here, our our conference and our MVPs of the week, and pff, LDL wasn't this high up there where Evo was, and they actually have an MVP mod with six kills. Actually, two mods with six kills. Um, pretty crazy. I think, yeah, for the highest in LDL majors is like five and then four. So, Evo came to shine this week. Evo's power rankings were so much more difficult to decide than majors. But I say, let's jump right into it. Uh, but as you guys can see here, like Chris Lorxy, Lorxy, I probably mispronounce it, Arbelardo. Uh, Christian all coming up on top with a three or more. Oh, Aaron had also three differential win. Uh, but enough of that. Let's kind of jump into the power ranking. And the 16th spot, unfortunately, we're going to give it to Ryan. Oh, and what's, what is that name? Something with the rosary. Okay, hold up. I need to open up Discord. Now that I can't see the... Ugh, oh, it's annoying. Wait. If I open up the dock, I could probably get it. All right, but yeah, uh, Ryan, unfortunately, Ryan got 6 0 within eight turns. Super, super unfortunate. Um, it does not work out in his favor. I've been where you're in your, in your shoes, Ryan. I brought a red card Ferrothorn against a Zygarde team, and that's exactly the mod that got drafted in. Uh, I went to him, activated my red card, and I had nothing. I had counters for it, but I, I weakened it and stuff like that. But yeah, that match really just Swamper comes in, steps up rocks as it takes a liquidation, uh, takes another liquidation. So now it's in the red. Galissapod gets roared out into Crocodile, Scarfed, and he had. Ryan, Ryan had four mods over with the ground types, which made no sense to me. And a Mega Alakazam, whose defenses are pitiful as well. So, you guys can tell it just did not work out. And it's the oh, Roselon Rose Rays. That's the team name. But yeah, unfortunately, Ryan is going to be at the bottom spot. But by all means, I know you can bounce back, bro. It's only one game, it's only the first game. I've, I've been there, I think. I think. But it's not about me. It's about you guys getting better. And Ryan, you can only go up from here. You can't get worse. It can only get better. So, dude, I'm rooting for you. Keep going. You have Star Raptor. I have Star Raptor and PGL. That thing is a monster. You probably should have brought it. Actually, that's that would have made a difference if you would have brought that. That or even Avalog. Avalog gets hits. Well, he's making transactions without the fact. Okay, let's let's jump on to spot number 15. 15, and we have Philly. Philly and his team, the new cast Noi Verns. Ooh. I like this match. To tell you the truth, I loved how this match began. And then it went all downhill. I really enjoyed the 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 Weavile. The Weavile took a... Do I want to switch to music now? Uh, no, I won't switch it now. But okay, Weavile took a... I love Pickpocket. Pickpocket on Weavile is amazing. So it took a Choice Scarf from uh, Flygon. And then Registeel came in. And I've probably seen... This is probably one of the, my favorite texts of the week. He stays in and goes for the focus punch and like expecting rocks and Regis still did go for rocks so it was like I was like bam I was like yo Philly has put himself in the perfect position until and, and look at this this is about like 75 to 80 percent to the registry alone and then after that Philly has a nerve and clicks it again I'm like no so all you see it's tightening his fist and Mimikyu comes in and lets it off. Um, Tooth be chill, bro. Focus punch works that you have to not get hit for it to work. 
Since you revealed it the first time, I'm pretty sure he was going to attack you the next turn. Best play for you was to anticipate either the Mimikyu or another Mon, or just get safely into another Mon. Um, so yeah, Mimikyu comes in and it's actually sets up and it's it's very difficult for Philly to get himself back into this game. Um, he lost like his best counter, his Rotom took just a big, big hit. And it made it very, very challenging for Philly to come back into this game here. I didn't even come up. Okay. Yeah, so that made it very, very challenging for himself. Um, but Philly, without a doubt, bro, you have it. You have the skills that it takes to to get W's, make it a playoffs, even a championship. All you guys do. Um, but the next time you show off your tech like that, you know, like they say, fool me once, shame on you. Fool me twice, shame on me. I think that's how it goes. I'm not going to look it up now, but you guys can do it there. Um, but also, oh yeah, I also made this question in majors. Guys, comment down in the section below. Who do you think or would you like to win the championship other than yourself? If there's like a team specifically that you really like, how balanced it is, but... Just write it down in the comment section below. I'll be the Billy's and Squid looking through those and whatnot. Uh, if you want to vote for yourself, vote for yourself. I always vote for myself. Uh, <laughs> jumping out to 14, we're going to go into the Arkansas Razor Wins. Uh, JP, I actually I have battled JP before. JP is a very, very scary opponent. Um, also, like most of these evil players, I don't know. So I'm really... Um, it's one of the exciting factors for this season because I get to know most of you guys now and your play styles and what's what's good and what's not. But yeah, JP, a uh, phenomenal player. He's really, really good. Has a very, very weak, uh, rough week one, man. A very, very tough week one. Um, his opponent just very solid walls. I, I think it was just... The matchup itself that made it very 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 difficult um he just couldn't get the right reads when he needed to and when he did his opponent was very well prepped Oof, i don't know it's like jp would needed to bring probably the toppest of all tiers this week yeah the only thing man was if you knew your Frost Slash was Scarf. Why didn't you send it in sooner? Because uh, Frost Slash went for Destiny Bomb and killed the Mega Charizard X. But this was after his, his whole team died. Like, it was, I think, like, 4-4 four, four or 4-5 four, at one point, And it's 4-4. Four, four. It was 4-4 four, four at one point And no, 4-5. 4-4 four, four, four or 4-5. Four, I don't remember now. I just looked at the dock. Man, hold up. I want to be sure, because I know it was because JP just was here. It was 5-4, 5-4, um, and it finished 4-4, but uh, JP just... Dude, why didn't you send it sooner? Why didn't you send it sooner? If you could have got rid of the Mega Charizard X, but instead at the last turn... Like, I felt at one point, you did actually have a lot of checks. It was actually hacks that played a factor into this game, like Jirachi got burned. Even though it didn't really matter, but still, it got burned from a fire punch. But whatever. Point of the story was, uh, you didn't go for the Destiny Bomb when you should have towards more at the beginning. Probably when it was behind a sub or something like that. You didn't reveal it. You never re even revealed your item of the Frost Slash. You brought it in when it got U turned and then you swapped it out. Yeah, yeah, you could have. Probably got fluttered. Uh, but it's okay. It's okay, man. And next up, in spot number 13, I have put Amber. Amber and her Lake lake Village. I know there's a Lake View, I think, team or something. I know there's like two Lake teams. Lake Village, Lapras. Um, a very interesting week as well. Uh, Amber had a little... A tough one. I would say it's a tough one. Uh, super... I underestimated Amber. I'm gonna admit I did underestimate it because her opponent got a Haxorus at plus one, and I was like, she's probably gonna get swept here, and she proved me wrong. 
she proved me wrong. Kecleon itself was able to take it. Manhandle. I can never get Kecleon. So, Ampers, kudos to you because I can never get to use that mod successfully. And you're able to, to like, I think you knock off and then sucker punch. It was amazing. It was really, really nice to see. Um, but yeah, just we slacked a bit um, in preparations for the for the Kung Kelder. Kung Kelder made it very, very challenging this week for her. Oof. I... I would have to say advice for this week. Oh, man. It's that her opponent had two setup mods. It made it very, very challenging. Like, all these... All these... Okay. I have to admit, like, rankings between 13... <laughs> All the way up to four are very, very challenging in, in placements. I probably even didn't even place some of these right. Some of you guys are probably like, no, I should be higher. Or, no, I should be lower. It was challenging, guys. I gotta admit, it was challenging. But yeah, an average, um, I'm just gonna have to say, yeah, an average game. Um, yikes, I don't know what she could have done different. Probably, yeah, getting the Mega Skeptile out sooner. Probably the biggest, biggest mistake. Because we have to realize uh, which side of your opponents was weaker. Also, uh, another piece of advice. If Kunkelder activates his Toxic Orb, don't knock off the Toxic Orb. It's already done its job. It's like, it was a really, because fighting types resist dark moves. And then on top of that, the orb is already activated. So... Like, it's not like lefties. It's not going to be getting lefties every turn. So I really would have preferred if you drain punched or something like that. But, yeah. But, yeah. Um, really just capitalize on... Usually you're trying to figure out what's your opponent's um, weaker stat. And in this case, Kelder had a much weaker special defense than physical defense so like you bring in infernate before bringing in skeptile mega skeptile which mega skeptile leaf storm probably would have done the trick because we kn you know it's not assault best it's probably like full hp run a few calcs here and there it was almost probably like around 60 70 percent actually a drain punch i would have to say it was relatively high but you would have got it way way down lower um whoa 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 Whoa, no, no, this is this is why I knew I, I had to change the music. Now I'm gonna get flamed for this. I'm gonna get flamed. I'm gonna get flamed for this. That's hilarious. That is hilarious. Okay, that's okay. I can get flamed for that. I really don't know how that went to. I'm not gonna, I'm gonna let you guys figure out what song that was. I'm gonna let you guys figure it out. Um, so, whoa, <laughs> I lost my train of thought, but yeah, Amber, don't worry. You got this. Uh, hopefully, um, just capitalize on that. Try to realize which opponents are um, just weaker stats. Weaker stats focus on that. And you got this. Um, next up, talking about Flutterness. Number 12 spot. Um, I knew how to pronounce his name and now I forgot how to say it. Zeminan? Zeminan. I think it's Zeminan. Yeah, Zeminan. Okay, so Zeminan and their team is the Detroit Soul Galeos. Dude's not a bad battler. He has zero aura. I have zero aura. It's we we're both very interested in getting this mod, or just at least trying it out for the season. But a lot of second guessing, my dude. Just so much second guessing. You know it yourself. You did your post comp. Uh, I appreciate that because um, it's hard to make these decisions when you don't know your opponents, or at least the, the player's thought process. But you did a post comp, so I was able to get some intel. Of, of why and what went down but just probably one of the biggest mistakes and that's going for that Ferium Z on the the Crow Brawler when you had the chance that was probably one of the biggest ones and just I know what it's like to be in game and then you forget about your items or your sets so I highly suggest probably even though if well, if you're gonna do live comp, always do that quick team recap. Now I'm doing team quick team recaps. 
uh, beforehand, and I, I remember what item I'm holding usually, because I, 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 I get to see it. I, I do a quick team recap, bam, 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 bam. Uh, you see everything. Kind of remember the sets as you as you re recap and whatnot. Um, but yeah, just or before you even make a decision, always it's there. The option before you switch, you can look at your your team, uh, the items. Uh, I totally agree, man. If you would have played uh, those aggressive doubles with an Incendiar War and got those Flare Blitz off when you had the chance, you would have done so much better. So much better in the long run. But other than that, you played a pretty solid game, man. I, pre I really enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. It was just all the second guessings that you you gambled and stuff like that or... Or just kind of slipped your mind, especially with the, the Swamper versus the Amoongus plays. And you had a single over the back, which easily would have taken the Giga Drains and allowed you to get a Flare Blitz off. But without a doubt, I can I can see you moving up this next week. You're probably going to take, um, you're going to learn a big lesson from this game and keep moving forward. All right, so we're going to jump up to spot number 11 where we have Davin. Uh, Davin and his team, the Turner. Is that a U or a Tortoga? Oh, it is an R. So it's Tortoga. So the Turner Tortogas. It's not an S with them. Whatever. Um, he was up against Brayden. Unluckily for him, Davin had to face a lot of packs this week. He got... A burn on Gu a Guja got burned. A Tapu Bulu got burned. Muck Alolan got burned. Half his team got burned, basically. Half his team. Excuse me. Uh, sorry. Uh, half his team got burned, but I really enjoyed the Azelf set. Uh, the Azelf set was a phenomenal, beautiful one. Um, the Magico and the, the, the Taunts, was it? Yeah, it had Taunt and it had Magico. Um... So he knew Sticky Boys was coming and he was going to try to bounce it back. So I really, really did appreciate that. I, I thought that was pretty solid tech. Overall, I enjoyed, I, I enjoyed the Guja. The Guja was such an amazing set to watch. A physical uh, Power Whip, Earthquake, uh, Fire Punch. Uh, what was the last move, man? Was it Draco Meteor? I know somebody dropped the Draco Meteor. Was it the Guja? It probably was the Guja. Who else is this Draco Meteor? That was probably it. But really solid coverage for his opponent's team overall. Hey, it, it did well. I, I The Guja was amazing. Uh, hydration, even though he didn't have Rain Dance, but it's fine. Um, mega Banette, another Mega I would love to use. I think you used it very, very well. Although the Muck could have put so much work, unfortunately, it was burnt. Bro, to tell you the truth, you're probably only down here because of the burn, most likely. Well, the burn played a big factor. But your opponent played very, very well as well. But the opponent played a big factor decision-wise. I think you made all the right decisions. Um, maybe using the Cleric Mod next time. It's it's hard to tell. It's just hard to tell. Especially, you don't account for hacks sometimes. And hacks just happen. Overall, dude, it's not really your fault. Uh, that's why I have you more towards more of the top, topper, upper end here of the lowering scar because the top were the ones that really showed off their skills and won. But as mentioned, guys, from spots 13 to 4 were very, very difficult. They're all very close races. But I have to determine it by how how well player players um, people played and and how they managed to get out and in for matches. But with that said, we're gonna jump onto the 10 spot. 10 spot, Preston, another typical VGC player with a Neo Show, Necrozma, and this was probably one of the matches of the century, probably probably the match of the week. Um, in my opinion, it's like the second match. We'll get into the first match for me, uh, but so yeah, like really, he's still getting the hang of it. Preston did come from PU. He did very, very well. Um, just he's still getting used to the fact that you can have multiple, um, 
item users, like multiple scarfers, multiple focus sashers, multiple lefties. Uh, when you come from GVGC, it's very, very difficult to get used to that. But I think he prepped phenomenally well for his opponent this week. I think um, I truly enjoyed it. I think it was a solid, solid match overall. You have so volley to oof. Oh, I like this team. I love this team actually. Um, yeah, I like a lot of these teams. But yeah, he brought like Roserade, Politoed, Tornadus T, Tornadus T plus Politoed, Hurricanes for days. That was. Did I see that? I did see that. I did see that. Um, he had Mega Gardevoir, Mammal Swine. I truly, truly, truly enjoyed the way. You were able to maneuver between the Tornadus and the Roserade. You got you really were able to use those two mods exceptionally well this week. Very, very well. Even the Politoed. Um Mamoswine usually breaks hooks. Um uh, I don't know, man. It's not much because you didn't do anything wrong. You didn't I don't think you did much wrong except except like his opponent, man. I don't know. I don't know. I just don't know. I do know you're like in 10th spot. Like you did very, very well. Um, probably if one of the topper winners of this week didn't do that, well, you'd probably be up there with Echo. Uh, but with that being said, Preston, you did well. I think the problem was, as you mentioned, you're still getting a custom from, from doubles to singles. The, the, the fact that you can take into account double scarfers and stuff like that. Um, not sure if you had a scarfer. I think you having the Scarfo would have been also very, very nice. Maybe give give it a try yourself. Give Get a Scarfer. I think when we battle also, you didn't have a Scarfer. So yeah, I would suggest probably maybe like Mammoth White Scarf would have been nice. Or maybe it was Scarf. I don't know. I, it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell unless you guys put it up on YouTube, but I'm not going to force you to do that. Um, and then we're going to jump on to spot number nine. Where it is Echo. Echo, I think, just took over. Uh, also known by, uh, I don't know if I can say your real name. You let me know, Echo. We'll just stick to Echo. Echo has, I was looking at this team and I was like, how was this team even constructed? Because, in my opinion, it's broken. Probably one of the broken teams. Uh, Necrozma, um, Zygarde, 50%. And Mega Scizor on the same team is ridiculously powerful ridiculously powerful um dude you did amazing i gotta say it i have to say it you did amazing probably your only misplay the necrozma one man the necrozma there was no need for you to go for the calm mind um we do know you went for automize but you had to remember the crowbat did set up the tailwind um, giving his opponent the double in speed, so you automize your double in speed, but Let me give you a little piece of advice Eight times out of ten Hydreigon runs Scarf Just piece of advice eight times out of ten a Hydreigon is Scarf. I always in battles Anticipate Scarf Hydreigon. If it's not Scarf, then it's not a problem. If it is Scarf, then it's a problem so Piece of advice, if you have a notebook, write that down somewhere. But overall, I really, really loved the coverage you had. Um, Tangrove, I have wanted to draft Tangrove so badly this season. Unfortunately, it was Snipe for me. It's such a great mod. Um, man, I love the Alola, um, Alola Marowak. You brought the totem set. It was a close game, a 1-0, 1-0, which... I do believe had you not call mine with the Necrozma, we'd be talking a different game. If you had, if you did have Signal Beam, because weakness policy was activated, you went for Automize, which I understand, but just if you had the Photon Geyser plus Signal Beam, which covered covers probably everything, because um. The only things that resist the psychics are psychic and immune by by um immune by dark types. Well, st uh, okay, steel types would resist. So eh, 
it's close. It's close. It's it's our it's our um, it's a thin line to call there. But I really maybe next time just Earth Power Photon Geyser Signal Beam. You could have made the read uh, into Hydreigon, gone for that Signal Beam. You would have been beautiful. But other than that, dude, you did really really well. I enjoyed this match. Probably one of my favorite matches, and we'll be talking because Tangrove ate up hits and what we mean it ate up hits we're talking about a solid berry i think the extra drill got to plus six if i'm not mistaken if not plus four and was able to eat the rock slide because it resists the earthquake and the iron head stab so i really really no actually he didn't even have one of those stabs because he had substitute plus sword dance so tag growth eating that hit keeping you alive Bam, that was amazing. Really enjoyed that. Really, really enjoyed that. But with that said, guys, let's jump on to the top eight contenders right now. Eighth place, we have Alejandro, who just finished battling um, the Toronto Star Raptors and Echo. Alejandro had a, a good team, a good matchup. Really enjoyed it. But... Just the fact, the, the fact Excadrill came up so short, so short on the KO on Tangrove, made this game what it wasn't supposed to be. Um, I have Alejandro probably at the bottom because, but like at the bottom of the list, only because this game was so much closer than it should have. This game ended 1 0, went easily, probably. Alejandro was all set up actually to win 4 0. Alejandro was set up to win 4-0, ended up being a 1-0. Super, super unfortunate. Other than that, um, Crobat was an amazing ring. Huge misplay with the U-turn on the Necrozma. That could have cost you. That's like one of the number one rules is you don't go for a super effective attack, especially with the prison armor on Necrozma, reducing super effective attacks by 25%. Necrozmas usually carry the weakness policy. I battled one that carried a weakness policy it's super scary to deal with and it is a huge problem so that was just a slight misplay by him but mega glalie putting in the finest of work this week i really enjoyed seeing that mod hydragon put in amazing work as well tapu finny tapu finny oh my god with the hidden power fire for the mega scissor oof plays 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 oh talking about that hidden power fire that was another thing you should probably be careful with, Echo. Hidden Power Fires are a thing. They are. You just gotta find out what mods usually have it. Usually they're the most defensive ones. But enough rambling about that. I have to give the congratulations to Alejandro of a phenomenal, phenomenal victory here, week one. Um, do keep up the good work. Just, man, extra Joe. You gotta pick up those KOs, man. If it's by using a different move probably or i don't know i just figure it out figure it out <laughs> um next up we have braden is it braden or pra brad dean probably braden or oh, braden probably braden i think it's braden 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 yeah we'll stick to braden braden I had to rewatch your match, and I'm actually debating this because I feel like I probably put you, put you too low. Mention one again, probably four to eight. They can, they probably shouldn't be where they are. I will justify that. I'll take the blame for that. I was looking at Braden's team, uh, Braden's match right now, and it was, it was a lot better than I. It was just long. It was 47 turns, but still, it was a really really good one. And his team is the psychedelic. Psydux, Brayden um, did really, really well. He took a huge, huge gamble. Um, after seeing the Magic Coat, he still went for the Sticky Webs with the Azelf right in front of him. I don't know if he was expecting his opponent to hard switch out uh, due to the Bug Buzz or, or something, but I loved, I loved, I loved Sticky Webs plus Scarfic Teeny, excuse me, Scarfic Teeny plus Sticky Webs made Victini so viable and so so dangerous in the late game especially once Alamal Aloma uh, I can never pronounce that name what is this guy's name it's it's Aloma Aloma Mola there you go 
Aloma of Mola. Yikes. It's like a tongue twister for myself. As soon as that went down, Victini had a field day. Field day, it could just start going in and out. And oh my god, he just made a new transaction, which made this team even more scary. Oh, Jesus. Oh my god. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm looking at it right now that he added Cresselia onto the team. And that is that is oh Jesus. Wait, what? How did he add Cresselia? Hold up, now I'm intrigued because Okay, that's a mistake. That's a mistake. No, 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 that is no, no, that's not a mistake. I'm thinking of Jack, but Jack was something else. Jack has Cresselia. I can't believe nobody crafted Rosalia. Okay, Brady has Brady has a monster team. I'm I'm stop rambling. I'm rambling. Squid, you're rambling. Okay, Brady did amazing. Brady did phenomenal. I I I enjoyed. I truly truly. What I mean, I enjoyed Kingdra with Rain Dance plus Hydration Vaporeon coming in clutch, super super clutch. Rest uh, that Aloma Mola Aloma Mola, <laughs> dude. We we'll just call it Jesse. Can we call it Jesse? Jesse likes that man. Uh, so like Jesse had toxic. Jesse could not touch Vaporeon. It just could not touch it for its days. Um, so really, really enjoyed it. I have Vaporeon myself. I know how how great of a mod it is. Actually, I have Vaporeon and Happy Tino on my team. Plus the Mega Pidgeot. So our team looks very, very alike. I actually, I have like a little bit of everybody's team. So I really enjoy a lot of these teams. But Raiden, keep up the great work, man. Yo, awesome victory. I think it was a 2-0 victory. Probably ended up closer. And that's a very tra well-trained Vaporeon. Because Vaporeon got every single burn it needed to. Which was super, super funny to watch. And same thing with Gudra. Gudra landed every single power whip. And I'm just here like, these guys, I need to find out what they train their mods. Because they're doing a great, great job. And then we have next the Slovenia Slow Bros. An opponent I would love to battle one of these days. And Marlot... Or Marriott, Mar Marlot. Wait, no. Why did I say Marlot? There's no L O T. Marlot, 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 Marlot. I'm, I'm pretty sure he'll tell me how to pronounce his team later on. Marriott, Marriott. No, that's not Marriott. Or Marlot, Marlot, Marie. Is it Marie? I don't know. Okay, but super crazy game in my opinion. Pretty. Crazy game, going for the crazy moves, uh, solid tech overall. Um, I watched his draft analysis. He was using underappreciated mods, and Don Fan is not underappreciated. That thing is amazing, and it's so crazy because you come into this match and you're like, okay, Manaphy is like his go-to, go-to mod. That's gonna be the mod that does the most work. That's not how it happened. M Manaphy was the one that did the least amount of work. It was Amoongus, Donphan, Togekiss, Bronzon, and Crabominal that did all the work. The fact that he was able to use those five mods successfully to pick up a W was awe for me. I was like, this guy truly is one of the better draft league ballers that I can watch at the moment. Probably even learn a thing or two from. Um, super crazy, the Corvomino staying in against the Diancie, and then next turn switching out, expecting a fairy move, and, and got the bronze on to eat it up. Crazy, crazy, crazy. Um, yeah, man, he just made all the right plays. I really, in, I really love the fact that he kept Don Fan alive um, towards the late game because um, there was the Zero Aura, so it was able to take on Zero Aura very, very nicely. It actually stopped the Zero Aura very, very, um, a lot. It stopped the Zero Aura because as much as maybe Zemanon wanted to bring in the Zero Aura, he couldn't because the Dawn fan was there and was ready to stop it. But, oof, probably one of the, uh, one of the better match. Thank you so much, Professor, with that post comment and that match. If you guys haven't watched that, guys, highly suggest you go check it out. Highly suggest. It's a really good match to watch. Keep up the good work, man. Keep up the good work. I would say your name again, but I know I'm gonna mess it up because it's Marat, 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 Marat. It's our R O Marat, 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 Marat. Huh. I'm about to say Rots. I don't know why I'm saying Rots. Marat, 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 Marat. 
And I just gotta stop, gotta stop. And we have a, this four spot Christian. What happened in Christian's game? My God, guys, you gotta bear with me. It's 16 games, so I have to bear with um, bear with so much knowledge here. Um, but oof, okay, I remember that. This one was against Philly, right? Philly, I believe. Philly was it? Philly? I think it was Philly. Against Philly, yes, it was Philly. Okay, so the Cinder Silvalis. I like that name, Cinder Silvalis. Cool. Picking up a 4-0-W this week. Um, he did an amazing job with the Reggie steal there. Making that read. Going into Mimikyu. Mimikyu. Just my only shocker was... He... Okay, so he did go for short stance, right? And then he showed off his never-ending nightmares. The only thing is, his movesets were... Um, Swords Dance, Play Rough, Leech Seed, Shadow Sneak. So I'm like, wait, you went Never Ending Nightmare with Shadow Sneak? Uh, heads up, Shadow Sneak, if you do the Z move, you won't get the priority. It won't be a priority move. And had you done the Ferium Z instead? I, I understand, I actually, probably went to Shadow Sneak. Shadow Sneak probably was for the Venusaur overall. But if you had the Ferium Z, you would have O Code that wrote them and that would have made your game so much more easier but i think i i love the coverage the coverage overall did amazing because it just knocked out everything almost let me see it was leech seed shadow sneak play rough play rough for the weavile play rough for terrakion um shadow sneak power for garberter uh leech seed for mega venusaur Hydrig, uh, Rhyperior probably play rough. Uh, Rotom Wash play rough, or even the Z move play rough. Um, so yeah, he got a phenomenal coverage overall for most of the thing. That probably that's why he didn't go for Ferium Z. Probably the Garburner is a huge stop, but man, such an awesome game to watch, truly, truly. Um, Milotic, another mod I would love to love to use. Unfortunately, I haven't yet. But Milotic coming in very clutch at the late game, getting easy kills there. Easy kills as soon as Mimikyu has weakened everything. Uh, getting those rocks up made it very, very nice. Maybe difficult for your opponent to sing. And then and you have Mew on your team. This is another great team. Another great team. Ah, oh, Mega Beedrill. Oh, I wanted to use that mod. I wanted to draft that mod. So many of these mods. You guys have amazing teams. You guys overall have amazing team. Um, but we're going to go into the third spot. And that's going to be Lord C. Lord C. Lord C. We're going to say Lord C. Lord C. Lord C. And the Philadelphia Phantoms. This is the opponent that, or the player, or the coach, whatever you guys want to play, boy. That did get the 6 0. He got a 6 0 with. Crocodile, so I'm going to put him high up there. I'm not going to give him the one spot because I'm pretty sure all he did was click two buttons, which was Earthquake and that was um, Liquidation. Those were the only two buttons he clicked and got him a 6-0. There's not much to say to this game. Uh, remember, for power rankings, you really have to take into consideration how the coach played and how their opponents played. It... It's not so much that that Philadelphia here, the Lord C played amazing. He did play good, I'm gonna admit. I didn't learn anything, truly, because his opponent brought four Mons weak to ground and this guy brought a Scarfed, a Scarfed Crocodile and just obliterated, like, and like he had a good team too, actually. But just Ryan, don't bring quad weakness to ground next time. I mean, well, not quad weakness. It's just four weaknesses and the moxie boosts. But overall, man, hey, I gotta give it to you because red card worked in your favor. Well, not even red card. It was the roar. Red roar worked in your favor. Brought you in what you needed, and you just had to click one move away. You just click that move away. <laughs> but um, yeah, so. I'm just not giving you the top because it has to do, even though you did play well, it's really just your opponents who did 
lacked a bit. I know, I, th I think he's going through stuff, so I feel really, really sorry about that. Uh, but I'm hoping he bounces back, probably. If you need pointers, if anyone needs pointers, by all means, hit me up in the DMs. I can give you a little bit of advice here and there. I'm not the best, though, so don't expect, like, grade A stuff. I have, like, C minus kind of stuff. But still, C minus is a C minus. That's still passing. Uh, number two spot, we have uh, Aaron 12. Here, Aaron 12 and his his team's name is going to be... I like, I like looking at the dot because then I get the full team. Ooh, this team has carry on black. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. That's the Rome and Polion. The Roman Polions coming in phenomenally clutch this week. Zep Striker. Oof, this mod, Zep Striker. I never thought I would see two physical Zep Striker in the same week. Jesse had one. Here we have Aaron with one as well. That thing was extremely powerful because it O code Mega Gardevoir. And I was like, this thing has to be banded. Little did we know until at the end when Elspid, Elspid, um, Tornadus, Tornadus T with Wild Charge. I was like, oh, never mind. All this time he was Scarf and right under my nose. Right under my nose and it was Scarfed. So, oof. But yeah, Licky Licky, Ente the Mega Aerodactyl was able to weaken a lot of things, so that was awesome. Suicune eating up those hits, Serena, uh, Serena made like the first appearance and it made the last appearance, <laughs> I think. It just, I know it, it made an appearance in the beginning and it made an appearance at the end, so <laughs> that was funny. Um... But no, but Licky Licky, I really love the Licky 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 with the Protect, the Wish, had coverage with Flame, um, Flamethrower, and it had coverage, what was the last coverage? Oh my god. Dude, it was a good coverage. It's just, it was a well coverage. It was very, very well. Whatever. You guys know it. If you're not, check out the battle. It's in the evil lock. If you need the battle, let me know. I'll get you the code. But this game was probably one of... Actually, one of the really, really... Probably one of the best matches. I I, I personally consider this one and the one by Chris Y. GoPro one of the, the two best matches. Um, Just what I want to talk about... Touch upon, actually. Zip Striker, man. Zip Striker, the MVP... The work that it put in this game was crazy good. Crazy good um, in the sense it was like, I think it O-Code the Politoed. Well, not O-Code, like one hit KO, but it killed the Politoed, killed Gardevoir, it killed Tornadus, it killed... And it was so crazy because even, like his opponent had Mamoswine in the back and this guy kept clicking. He kept clicking all of those wild charges and I was like, Someone's got to stop this guy. Someone's got to stop this man because Aaron did phenomenal week one. Phenomenal, phenomenal, phenomenal. Um, I'm getting really excited. I want to battle some of these evil players, man. <laughs> Probably Aaron's going to be one of those. But has a powerful team. He has Kyron Black. Has yet to bring. He has also Suicune, a very, very bulky mon. It's going to be a tough match, guys. If he has... Aaron's going to be a tough one. It's going to be a toughie, guys. But no, overall, I think Zep Strike, uh, Zep Strike and the Licky Licky, those two together, put in the finest of work this week. Finest of work of, of taking those hits or even dishing out those hits, getting those wishes off, passing them around, stuff like that. Even Suicune, Suicune, the rest sleep talk. Suicune, just nothing on on Aaron's team wanted to die. Nothing on Aaron's team wanted to die. It was a good match. Really, really good match. And Preston was a phenomenal opponent. Really solid uh, prep from both teams. But Aaron came up on top. And then on the top number one spot, I have Chris Y GoPro. If you have GoPro, Chris, nice, because I have one too. Just wanted to put that out there. And his team is 
the Helsinki Hydreigons. I think that's what it says there. I could be wrong. Yeah, it's the Helsinki Hydreigons. Hydreigons. This match, personally myself, I gave it a number one spot. I'm not gonna penalize it because it's on showdown. Usually, I penalize when it's on showdown, but it was his. As mentioned, I've battled JP. JP is not an easy opponent. He has really, really good stuff. Make a Charizard X though. Make a Charizard X. But before I even talk about Mega Charizard X, can we talk about the core of Miltank, Ferrothorn, and Lando T? Menchow and Primarina did not even make an appearance this game. Same for most of these players. Good luck. Aaron, Serena made one appearance, probably two appearances. Um, there was a lot of opponents. Christian, I think Christian, his, yeah, his um, Mega Beedrill. And Shaman did not make an appearance, which is ridiculous. Like, that's how well these players did, the ones on top here. They had mods that did not make an appearance because the other ones were doing so, so well. But for Chris White GoPro, his Miltank, Ferrothorn, and Lando T did such a phenomenal job of wearing down his opponent's team that it was ridiculous ridiculous it made it very very difficult for jp to make the predictions um when he should have made the prediction for lando t he couldn't until he did at the end and even when he did make the prediction go off for ice punch at minus one which would you would assume to do a good chunk of damage we see the yachi berry he switches out ferret thorn gets more iron barb damage switch back into lando lando dies but now it's a neg to uh, Mega Low Punny. Charizard X comes in, sets up a substitute as it switches out, and goes for Dragon Dance. And he had the coverage. He had the Earthquake and he had Fire Punch, which was enough coverage to take down the rest of JP's team, especially due to the fact that Miltank, Ferrothorn, and Lando were able to wear down everything. And phenomenal job. You even had Defog on Lando because rocks were on your side. You got rid of them. You knew that Charizard X had to come in clean and healthy, and you did. That's why I personally, myself, I, I enjoyed that match. I consider that to be the top match of the week. Um, recycling the the, the the core with Miltank, Ferrothorn, and Lando T. I know Aaron had a very nice core as well with the Suicune. It was Suicune, his core, Suicune, Licky Licky. Those two were really good cores. Yeah, Suicune, Licky Licky, but um, Chris here had a core between Miltank, Ferrothorn, and Lando T that made it very difficult for JP. Um, and even when he, well, he killed the Lando T, and once he did, Mega Charizard X was able to come in and do what Mega Charizard X does, and that is sweep. It was able to sweep, 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 and it got all six kills thanks to his three comrades of Miltank, Ferrothorn, and Lando T. I probably said that probably 20 million times now. But with that said, that would be the conclusion of our power ranking for LDL Evolution League. I can't say that actually because LDL stands for Lonely Draft League, and I gotta end it with League. Okay, I'm rambling again. Sorry, sorry. It's already 50 minutes. Let's jump into what is the battle of the week battle of the week is gonna go for a drum roll please and it goes to bam aaron congratulations my dude um go pm steven figure out your prize if you don't have a prize then you are you get a shout out that's what it is you get a shout out so Really, guys, hope the Rome and Polyons, who knows, maybe this will be your champion. Prove me wrong with week two's power rankings. I hope you guys enjoyed this power rankings. But with that said, this is the Blazing Squid signing off. You guys are amazing. Stay blazing. Peace out.